There are a number of factors that affect your choice of tire pressure for a mountain bike. Now that could be your body weight, it could be the terrain that you're about to ride, it could even be the size and width of your tires. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining the formulas that you can use, how you can know when you've got it wrong and when you should be changing your tire pressure. Generally speaking, mountain bike tire pressure ranges from 20 to 40 PSI, PSI being pounds per square inch, but some manufacturers will state bar, which is 1.4 to 2.8 bar is the equivalent of 20 to 40 PSI. Now this is just a range and you need to figure out what is best for you, your riding and your weight. Now there are two formulas that I commonly hear, so I'm gonna explore that. The first is to work out 20% of your body weight in pounds. So if you are 150 pounds, then 20% of that would be 30. So you would run 30 PSI. I do think this kind of over exaggerates the amount of pressure that you need. So for example, my body weight would require 25 PSI. However, I do usually prefer 20, sometimes 19, depending on the terrain that I'm riding and the style of bike that I have chosen. However, it does seem to be a nice starting point for a beginner. My second method is to go to your favorite trail and try it out yourself because pressure really is a preference and a kind of a feel thing rather than something you can work out with a magic formula. I would start with 25 to 30 PSI, maybe more like 25 for an XC bike and 30 for trail and enduro. Then go to your favorite trail and ride it a few times dropping your pressure by two PSI, maybe a couple of times, and then going back to your original pressure and increasing it by two PSI a couple of times and see what works for you. What you're looking for is a pressure that feels comfortable and it rolls over any roots that you're riding, but it's not so soft that it's deforming in the corners or even feeling like your rims are hitting the terrain. Traction is a word we often use when it comes to grip from pedaling. So you will get good traction up technical climbs like this, especially rooty ones, if you have a slightly lower pressure than usual. However, you'll know you've gone too low and you've got it wrong if you are hitting the roots with your rims and they're making noises. You don't wanna be doing that. That's an indicator you've gone too low. If your back wheel is slipping up the climb and it's not gaining enough traction, then that's an indicator that you've got too much air pressure for the terrain that you're riding. The corners is probably the place where I notice wrong tire pressure the most. If you have too high a tire pressure, then you might find that your tires skid across the surface and they won't gain traction out of the corners. If you have too low a pressure, you might even feel the tire case itself bend and deform as you press into the corner. It's a really disconcerting feeling that'll make you feel like you're gonna fall over. And I personally will favor a rough ride so that I get better support in a corner. Mountain bike tire pressure goes a long way to giving you comfort on your bike. It's your first point of contact and it will iron out technical terrain that perhaps your suspension won't sort out. If you can go lower, then it'll deform over rocks and roots and give you a slight magic carpet feel that will be more comfortable. However, it can be a little draggy and might not be as efficient as something a little higher. If you have too high a tire pressure, then the trail is gonna feel very jarring and you'll get a lot of vibration through the bike and you might not be very comfortable and certainly it might be quite fatiguing over time. Tire pressure will help you with your speed. So if your bike feels particularly sluggish, maybe a bit draggy on the climbs, it could be that the tire pressure is quite low and it's offering a bit of resistance to you pedaling. Equally, having too soft a tire will rob the energy from you putting the pedal strokes in. 
Having a harder tire pressure will help you roll faster, certainly on terrain like this, which is hard packed and smooth. There is a modern school of thought that thinks that lower pressure is actually faster because it'll deform over small bumps and obstacles, which are usually little barriers to gaining momentum, as every little hit will slow your bike down. So you don't want that. And effectively dropping the pressure means that there's less resistance and more speed. This depends on the terrain you're riding and there's obviously a balancing act to be had between the two. Once you've found your favorite tire pressure and perhaps you found that on your favorite trails, if you then go ahead and ride on slightly different terrain, you may need to adjust it accordingly. So if you go to a trail center or a bike park where everything is a little more faster rolling and you have bigger bermed corners, then you might need one or two PSI more pressure in your tires to offer you support in those corners, especially as you might be traveling at faster speeds than usual. However, if you come somewhere like this and it's more technical than what you're used to, perhaps it's more rooty or rocky, then you may need to drop your PSI by one or two so that it's softer. And that way, the pressure of the tires will allow the tires to deform over all the obstacles and it will give you a more confidence inspiring and planted ride. If you have too high a pressure in a technical terrain like this, you can find that you just bounce off rocks and roots and perhaps pinball around the place, which is quite disconcerting. Heavier riders tend to exude more force on their bike through to the ground. So they need more support with a higher tire pressure. Uh, certainly more than a lighter rider who might get away with a lower pressure. Now this also applies to riders who ride heavily. So they might ride quickly or they might ride aggressively and they need that support from the tires. Whereas someone who rides lightly or bounces over roots or pops over stuff a lot will get away with lower pressures. So it's fair to say that it's no good copying your friends because they might be heavier, lighter, or their style of riding might be heavier or, or lighter as well. If you change your tire widths or sizes, you may want to think about changing the pressure too. Generally speaking, a bigger tire volume means you can run slightly lower pressures because there's more surface area there to absorb the impact and the forces. So it will offer you a little more protection for your rims at the lower pressure. However, running that lower pressure still might give you that disconcerting feeling in the corners or if you're riding at higher speeds. So if your trail or enduro, you may want to go for thicker sidewalls uh, because not only does that offer you good puncture protection from sidewall splits, but that thicker casing will stand up to more forces and it will give you more support. In fact, downhill riders tend to run thicker tires for this reason, maybe even a downhill casing. Of course, if you're riding XC, you might not wanna go for thicker tires because it won't give you that nice supple feeling and they certainly won't be light. Temperature can affect your tire pressure or at least the way your tire pressure feels. So if you're riding in cold conditions, perhaps it's a particularly cold winter, you may want to add a few PSI as it will feel a little like it's got less pressure. Equally, if you go somewhere warmer, perhaps you go on holiday and it's hotter than what you're usually used to, your tires might actually feel quite firm as the pressure will increase inside the tire. So you may have to drop a few PSI more than usual. You may wanna consider changing your tire pressure a little bit for weather conditions. Some people like to drop their pressure by one or two PSI when things get really wet, as this can offer a little bit more traction in the mud and over wet routes, for example, especially if you're running your usual tire. 
However, if you've got the budget for it and you ride in mud a lot when the weather changes, then you might want to get a mud specific tire where the sights will be specific to gripping in mud. Also, if you're riding wet rock a lot, you might want to change the tire compound to something a little tackier. If after all this, you're still a little unsure of what pressure you should be going for, then do check out what the tire manufacturer recommends for your tire of choice. They often print the pressure on the side of the tire, or if it's not there, you should be able to find it on the manufacturer's website. And they will have taken into account the style of tire, its intended use, whether it is a thick casing or a thin casing, and given you a recommended range. You may also want to take into account whether you're running tubes or tubeless, as you can generally get away with a lower tire pressure with tubeless. However, with tubes, I tend to run a few PSI more just to protect them from getting pinch punches, as it seems to be a little bit easier to damage them. As you can see, there's no magic formula in finding the right tire pressure for you. There will be a lot of factors contributing to what is best, and you're just going to have to experiment. You are the biggest expert in you, so you're going to have to figure it out and keep playing with it uh, because your tastes might change over time. Also, do keep an eye on your tire pressure. Do check it regularly because it does change. It does go down over time. But hopefully that's helped you with a start point and let me know down in the comments below how you got on and what you chose in the end and why.